Hey guys, it's Joshua up in Montreal. I just wanted to do a little update on my uh, my Volt Bike Mariner here, my little mini bike. It's a 20 by 4 inch fat tire bike. It's quite unique. Um, it was very unique two and three and four years ago. Now you see a lot more of them being imported uh, from China um, all over the place. Um, there was, when I purchased this one, you could only get it in one place in the whole country of Canada. Now there's probably a dozen places you can buy them. But I um, was talking about, uh, talking to Justin from Grin Technologies in BC, British Columbia. And we were talking about regenerative braking. And I wanted to get uh, your guys' like opinion, if there's anybody out there who uses regen braking on their e-bikes and what they think about it. So here I have a, it was a 500 watt um, Bafang geared motor. You cannot put regen on that because of the freewheel, or sorry, it would have to freewheel inside. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I did research to see how you could put regen on a mid-drive. It's too complicated. You'd have to pretty much fix this motor, um, fix the, the crank to the motor somehow, almost like a fixie, which is not going to happen. So um, I was thinking putting a regenerative braking a, a motor or a direct drive motor on the front hub. Now these things weigh a lot, these direct drive motors. The one that I'm looking at weighs about 15 to 20 pounds. Um, and usually the return on these is anywhere between 1% and, uh, and 5%. But the thing is, we use these bikes for our business we do a big we have got a, a window cleaning company and we do big buildings so we tow a big cargo bike trailer almost like the bikes at work trailer but a bit tougher as you can see here there's our hitch system and our trailers uh we load them up with sometimes two to three hundred pounds worth of of cargo i'm 225 pounds and i'm a big dude um and uh, we we utilize the powerful mid-drive system because it offers much better lower end torque than any sort of direct drive or geared hub motor because you can use the granny gears. The only thing with a mid drive is you can't set up regenerative braking very easily. So we have the Lecky chain, the Lecky bling ring, the bling ring from Lecky. And then we have the Shimano six gear. It goes up to a 34 tooth the mega gear there as you can see so it's super low end torque but there's no regen braking and with a heavy trailer um, I've heard stories of guys getting 15 10 and 15 percent return um, back into their battery but uh, what's more important than return for me is actually saving on brake pads so I have the Shimano Z brakes which are dual piston hydraulic brakes Super, super tough. They're for downhill bike racing. Now, other than the Shimano Saints, these supposedly are the best dual piston hydraulic brakes that money can buy. Um, and since it's a business expense, I just splurged, and they're amazing. However, I go through two brake pads here, two brake pads there in a month. Sometimes it, I can stretch them for two months. Um, but here in Montreal, there's tons of hills and it's tons of downtown stop and go traffic. So one beautiful thing about uh, regenerative braking is it drastically saves on your brake pads. So at these these prices, I think I'm paying like 80 to $100 a set front and back each month to two months. Now, even though it's a business expense, that is an expense and it takes, you know, maybe an hour to change both. Time is money. So if I were to set up a direct drive here, even though it's extra unsprung weight, other than a mid drive, the weight would be directly inside of the wheel, which would affect handling to a certain extent. The payoff, which is huge for me, is just using the regen to slow down and perhaps even brake. Um, and since most of the braking happens in the front, I'd like to try to set it up in the front wheel. Um, so what do you guys think? Is that a viable option for something that hauls a lot of weight? Between four and 500 pounds of weight goes on this, uh, between this hitch and my butt on that chair, on that saddle, um, and the 80 pounds of bike that I have here.
Is it worth adding another 20 pounds? So what do you guys think? Let me know.